We're joined by Rick Rennell this week. There's a lot to talk about with Rick because he's a former acting director of national intelligence as well as a former ambassador to Germany. But with all this news about classified documents, we've now got the legal document filed by President Trump uh, and his team on uh, really the overbreadth, the special master, the Fourth Amendment issues, all, all kind of there, uh, potentially a little later than would usually be filed because we're a couple weeks into this. But Rick, I wanted to talk, start with you on this. You've talked a lot to our audience, but I think they need maybe a reminder on it about overclassification inside the federal government. When you came in as acting director of national intelligence, I remember that was one of the issues you, you took on front and center was that there were way too much uh, uh, being kept out, kept from the public under the guise of being classified. Yeah, Jordan, uh, you're, you're exactly right. The, the problem of overclassification is this. It, when, when you go in and you decide that information or content needs to be classified, meaning only certain people get to read it, otherwise it's blocked out and redacted. The idea that you classify information is because there is a source collecting that intelligence or a method on how we collect that intelligence. We call it a source or a method, a person or a system of how we're collecting. If that is going to be given away, then you block it out. And I think most Americans understand, yeah, you, you don't want to dry up the intelligence source or method. So block that out so that we don't give away our assets. But what's happened now in Washington, D.C., is that a whole bunch of people who are in charge start to redact and block lots of information, classify it away so that no one gets to read it in an effort to control the information that seems bad for the agency. It's a PR exercise. It's something that PR agents or press people would want to hide from the public. So instead of a source or a method, it's literally people saying, Let's hide this from the public because we don't want the public to know exactly what we're doing. That's a crisis. And, and, and I've shared with our intelligence community to say the American people really don't trust you. And that is going to be a growing problem when you don't have credibility with the American people. But right now, Washington is uh, not listening to that argument. They, they keep classifying information away. Rick, one of the things that have come up in this whole discussion, and the lawsuit's been filed by President Trump. In my view, it should have been filed two weeks ago. Uh, I would have moved to quash the subpoena immediately. I would have moved to get that judge recused and and that the evidence be returned. But they chose this path. That's whatever. Uh, but there's also this question that goes up. And we're talking about classification. Is what is presidential authority regarding classification of documents? And, decla and particularly declassifying documents. So you were the acting director of national intelligence. You've been in government for a long time in other capacities, including ambassador to Germany, where you dealt with, I'm sure, uh, in, you know, classified documents. What's the president's authority on declassification? Well, he, there's no one for him to ask. He, he gets to decide uh, what to classify, what to classify, what to declassify. He can, he can do anything and everything. There, there is no limits on it. Now, some people will talk about the limits of nuclear secrets or uh, certain documents that need to have a different process to declassify. But there is no one that the president of the United States needs to ask or tell. There is this idea in Washington that notification of classification, declassification, is a thing. And, and, and this is the swamp, I think, biting back climbing back to say, wait a minute, you didn't notify us. Uh, I would also um, just put forward, who is the president of the United States supposed to notify? Or who is he supposed to get uh, permission from? He is the highest person. There is nobody, except the swamp likes to think, oh, no, the secretary over at the DIA needs to know and approve who's declassifying. No, if she or he or, or that position absolutely should be notified if it's not the president of the United States. Yeah, so, but don't put that pressure on the president. Well, I mean, I view it as, as this. You, you have to look at the commander-in-chief clause of the Constitution. The president is the commander-in-chief. And what Rick's saying is there's no one for him to go to to seek approval. He's the highest-ranking officer of the United States. Now, 
what's happening right now is you've got this whole dispute, Rick, going on between uh, the Biden administration, let's be clear, and and President Trump over documents that were evidently at Mar-a-Lago, and now you've got this whole literal search warrant takes place, lawsuits have been filed, but the FBI is reviewing these documents. This was an unprecedented move in U.S. history. And we know, because of some information that's come out in the last uh, 24 hours, that there was, in fact, ongoing discussions about this going on. We knew this before, too, going on for a while about this. But what we didn't know was that the FBI authorized, uh, was authorized by the Biden administration to just kind of start the process. Not saying the search warrant, but this whole getting the documents because of national security issues. So the question then becomes is, are we dealing with a political move here? More than a legal move, is this a political move to stop a former president from running again at bottom? Well, first of all, let's let's point out two facts. One, they've always wanted to stop him from running. They, they've articulated that. They've been very clear. And so I think this is now just another mechanism to try to get him to, to not run. That, that's the first point. But the second point is to your question of whether or not it's legal or political, I think the answer lies in their change of argument. They have literally changed the argument for what they're going after and what the the details are according to how the Trump team is responding. So what seemed to start as a legal argument has clearly delved into a political argument because they're losing on the legal argument. Because to, to say that the president doesn't have authority to declassify information flies in the face of reality. And now that they know that, this is not Hillary Clinton who was never the president. She was the Secretary of State. Uh, it's, so it's not the same. The President of the United States gets to declassify. You don't see us going into Barack Obama's office and trying to figure out what did he take and what didn't he notify to declassify. So it's the double standard becomes the political argument. All right, let's uh, let's go to the phones. Uh, let's go to Jason Illinois online for Jason with these classification questions. Hey, Jason, welcome to Secular. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you for taking my question and all your hard work. Uh, <clears throat> my question is that uh, you know, expanding upon Mr. Grinnell's comments about him being the ultimate classification authority of the United States, how did the DOJ not or know or not know whether the president? Uh, didn't or did not, did or did not declassify those documents before leaving the White House. So, Rick, the process. I mean, there's 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 processes that the it, previous administrations had, and there was a memo uh, under George W. Bush's administration about the president having this broad authority to declassify. What, what Jason's going to is the then what's the process once he says I'm now declassifying this? Yeah, so it's a good question from Jason, and and the reality is is that. Once the president declassifies something, it's declassified. Now we're talking about notification of the declassification. And so the, the notification is really the swamp bureaucracy. What are we supposed to do? Who are we supposed to tell? What memos are we supposed to write? If there's a breakdown on the administrative side that certain agency wasn't notified, okay, so, so be it. That's not breaking the law. That is uh, breaking the bureaucratic uh, tradition. And so what I would just say to you is as someone who's been in the Oval Office a lot, when the president gives a directive, there are administrative people that then call DOJ or work out the, the, the paperwork. But it's not like the president picks up the phone to say, uh, I'm calling the you know, Department of Justice to declassify something. No, he says to the people in the room or at the White House or at the NSC, this is declassified. And then it's the responsibility of everybody else to notify uh, on a need to know basis who should be informed of that declassification. Because but, remember, a lot of this is need to know. Yeah, you know, but the thing that's amazing to me here uh, in this entire process is that as this is going forward, right, to build a criminal case on this when you know the president has declassification authority just seems way over the top as far as as process goes. Rick, we're out of time. We appreciate your comments as I always. Think where Rick got it down to was that it's not about he declassified. And see, this is getting missed in the news. That's why I like have people like Rick on who have been through all these kind of scenarios and, and it's kind of seen it all, literally. And as acting director of national intelligence. I mean, you'd see all the intel at the highest level. 
But he said it's not the it's not the declassification part that the Washington's really upset about. No. It's that they did the aides then properly notify this guy, this gal, this person, this the person. agents. And, Agencies. And, yep. and even then you have to be very as you said, as Rick said, very careful because only some people need to know that. This is where I think the case falls apart completely. Courts have no business getting involved in how something is declassified. I don't think it's their role. No, I think it's separation think, of powers. I think it's the it's yeah, it's clear right. commander in chief power, and each president can probably do it a little differently. 